The seismic forces acting on each floor of the building is calculated based on the seismic weight lumped at the floors. As per the definition given in IS1893, the seismic weight of a floor is the sum of dead load of the floor, appropriate contribution of the columns, walls and any other permanent elements from the stories above and below and appropriate amount of imposed load on the floor. These seismic weights are used to calculate the base shear and lateral forces on each floor in equivalent static analysis method. So let us try to understand the calculation of seismic weight and seismic forces on the building with the help of numerical example. Watch this video till the end to understand the concept visually in more simplified way. Subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you can get all the notification of new videos. So let us consider a four story office building with ordinary moment resisting RCC frame structure situated in seismic zone 2. The floor to floor height is 3 meter while center to center column spacing is 4 meter. The live load intensity at the floors and roof is 3 kN per meter square. The size of column is 300 by 300 and that of beam is 230 by 300 mm. The thickness of the slab and the brick wall is 150 mm and 230 mm respectively. The foundation soil type is medium. Consider importance factor equal to 1 and a response reduction factor as 5. Assume concrete density equal to 25 kN per meter cube and brick mass entry density as 20 kN per meter cube. So let us compute the seismic weight of the floor in first step. As per clause 7.4.1 of IS 1893-2016, seismic weight of each floor is its full dead load plus appropriate amount of imposed load. The weight of the columns and walls in any story shall be appropriately proportioned to the floors above and below. So assume the weight of columns and walls at the considered floor as 50% of above and 50% of below story. As the floor to floor height of the story is 3 meter, consider column and wall weight of 1.5 meter above and 1.5 meter below the floor level. To simplify the computations, let us do the calculations in tabular form. We will do the seismic weight calculations from fourth floor to first floor. So start with the fourth floor. As this floor is roof, assuming no wall is available above the roof slab, only 1.5 meter below the floor level considered in the seismic weight calculation. So first get the dead load of the slab. Total width and length of the slab is 8.3 meter. Hence the total dead load of the slab is equal to 258.34 kN. Next get the live load on the roof. As per the clause 7.3.2 for calculation of design seismic forces of building, imposed load on roof need not to be considered. Hence, take the live load on the roof equal to zero. Next, compute the dead load of beam. There are a total 12 beams with clear span of 3.7 meter. The total depth of beam is 300 mm, out of which 150 mm is already counted in the slab dead load computation. Hence, we will use remaining depth of beam 150 mm for the load calculation. After computation, we get the dead load of the beam equal to 38.29 kN. Next, compute the dead load of column. Total number of columns are 9 and their size is 300 mm by 300 mm. Here, 1.5 meter height of the column below the floor will be considered for the column dead load. After calculation, we get dead load of column equal to 30.38 kN. Next, compute dead load of wall. Here, 1.5 meter height of the story 
below the floor will be considered for the wall dead load. The actual height of the wall to be considered is equal to 1.2 meter after deducting the depth of beam assuming the wall is up to the beam bottom as shown in figure. There are 12 number of walls with a clear length of 3.7 meter. Here any opening in the wall is ignored. So after calculation the dead load of the wall is equal to 245 kN. Now compute the total load at fourth floor by adding dead load of slab, beam, column, wall and the live load on the floor. After computation we get the total load equal to 572 kN. Now let us calculate the total load on third floor. As the total size and thickness of the slab at third floor is same as fourth floor, the dead load of the slab is also same, that is 258.34 kN. Next, get the total live load on the third floor. Table 10 of clause 7.3.1 gives the percentage of live load to be considered for the different live load intensities. Here, the live load intensity is 3 kN per meter square. Hence, the percentage of live load to be considered is 25. So, after computation, the total live load on the third floor is equal to 51.67 kN. Next, compute the dead load of beam. As the number of beams, their sizes and clear span is same as fourth floor, the dead load of the beam is same as that of the fourth floor also which is equal to 38.29 kN. Next, compute the dead load of column. Here, 1.5 meter height of the column above and below the floor will be considered for the column dead load. Hence, the total height of the column to be considered is 3 meter. So, after calculation, we get the dead load of the column equal to 60.75 kN. Next, compute dead load of wall. Here, 1.5 meter height of the story above and below the floor will be considered for the wall dead load. The wall height above the floor is 1.5 meter, but below floor, the actual height of the wall to be considered is equal to 1.2 meter after reducting the depth of beam as shown in figure. Hence, the total height of wall including above and below the floor is equal to 2.7 meter. So, after calculation, the dead load of wall is equal to 551.45 kN. Now, compute the total load at third floor by adding dead load of slab, beam, column, wall, and live load on the floor. After computation, we get the total load equal to 960.5 kN. Now, let us calculate the total load on second floor. As the total size and thickness of the slab at second floor is same as third floor, the dead load of the slab is also same, that is 258.34 kN. Next, get the total live load on the second floor. As the live load intensity is 3 kN per meter square, the percentage of live load to be considered is 25 as seen in the third floor calculations. The floor area is same as that of the third floor. Hence, the total live load on the second floor is also same as that of third floor, which is equal to 51.67 kN. Next, compute the dead load of beam. As the number of beams, their sizes and clear span is same as third floor, the dead load of the beam will be same, which is 38.29 kN. Next, compute the dead load of column. As the column numbers, their sizes and height is same as that of third floor computations, the dead load of column equal to 60.75 kN. Next, 
compute dead load of wall. As the wall numbers, their sizes and height is same as that of third floor, the dead load of wall will also be equal to 551.45 kN. Now compute the total load at second floor by adding dead load of slab, beam, column, wall and the live load on the floor. After computation, we get the total load equal to 960.50 kN. Next, let us calculate the total load on first floor. As all the dimensions of columns, beams, slabs and wall is same as second floor, the dead load of slab, beam, column and wall is same as that of second floor. The live load intensity on the first floor is also same as second floor. Therefore, the total live load on the first floor is also same as second floor. After calculating the total load in tableau format, we have the seismic weight lumped at fourth floor is 572 kN, while third floor, second floor and first floor it is 960.50 kN. To get the total seismic weight of the building, we have to add all this floor weight, which we will get 3453.50 kN. In next step, let us compute the natural period TA. Clause 7.6.2a specifies the expression to calculate this natural period for the bare moment resisting frame building without any masonry infills. Section B gives the formulation for the buildings with reinforced concrete structural walls and for all other buildings which includes buildings with masonry infill wall the expression given in section C. As we have considered the brick wall in the seismic weight calculation, compute the time period from the formula given in clause 7.6.2 C. In the formula, H is height of the building and D is base dimension of building at the plinth level along the considered direction of earthquake. Here, value of H is 12 meter and value of D is 8.3 meter along x and y direction. After putting all the values in the equation, we get natural period equal to 0.374 second. Next, let us compute the design acceleration coefficient SA by G along x and y direction. The value of natural period is greater than 0 and less than 0.55 second for medium soil. Hence, the SA by G is equal to 2.5. Next, compute the design horizontal seismic coefficient AH using the equation specified in clause 6.4.2. In this equation, value of seismic zone factor Z for the seismic zone 2 is equal to 0 0.1 as per table 3 of clause 6.4.2. Importance factor I is equal to 1 and response reduction factor R is equal to 5. After putting all the required values in the expression, we get AH equals to 0 0.025. In next step, let us compute the design base shear VB along x and y direction as per clause 7.6.1. After putting the value of AH and total seismic weight W, we get VB equals to 86.34 kN. Now let us compute design lateral forces at each floor based on the expression given in clause 7.6.3. Let us do the calculations in tabular form to simplify it. To get the detailed explanation of computation in each column in this table, watch the previous video on seismic analysis by equivalent static method in this channel. The link of the video is given in the description of this video. The computation in the tabular form 
will be carried out from top to bottom of the building. So let us start from roof that is floor level 4. The seismic weight WI at this level is 572 kN. The height HI of the roof level from the base is 12 meter. Now compute the value of WI HI square which is equal to 82,368. Next at third floor the seismic weight WI is 960.5 kN. The height HI of the third floor from the base is 9 meter. Now compute the value of WI HI square which is equals to 77,805. At second floor the seismic weight is 960.5 kN. The height HI of the second floor from the base is 6 meter. The value of WI HI square is equal to 34,578. At first floor, 960.5 kN is the seismic weight. The height of first floor from the base is 3 meter. After calculation, the value of WI HI square is equal to 8,644.5 kN. Now, Find the summation of WI HI square for all the floors. This is equal to 2,3391. Next, let us calculate the design lateral force at 8th floor as per the expression given in column number 5 in the table. At 4th floor level, it is equal to 34.96 kN. At 3rd floor, it is 33.03 kN. At second and first floor level, it is 14.68 and 3.67 kN respectively. Here, as the VB is same along X and Y dimension, the lateral forces are also same. Finally, let us calculate story shear forces. The shear forces at a floor level is cumulative summation of design lateral forces up to that floor level. Let us start with floor level 4 that is roof. The story shear is equal to lateral force at this level which is equal to 34.96 kN. The story shear at third floor level is equal to the summation of lateral forces at fourth and third floor level. This is equal to 67.99 kN. The summation of lateral forces at 4th, 3rd and 2nd floor level gives the story shear at 2nd floor level which is equal to 82.67 kN and the story shear at 1st floor level is the summation of lateral forces at 4th, 3rd, 2nd and 1st floor level. This is equal to 86. 34 kN. Here we can see that the story shear at first floor level is same as base shear VB. This we can take as a check for the entire calculations. If you like this video then share your thoughts in comment section. Subscribe this channel and press the bell icon to get the notification of such interesting videos for visual and simplified learning of various civil engineering topics.